Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volkswagen Passat CC. Almost all Passat CC are front-wheel drive, an exception is made only for the top version with a 3.6 VR6 engine. Actually, this is a little strange considering the positioning of the model, but in practice the front-wheel drive is sufficient. At least there is no snow and mud yet, and the asphalt is dry. There are no serious problems with the mechanical part of the transmissions of front-wheel drive cars at all. If the shoes covers are intact, then everything works fine up to runs far beyond 200,000 km. Of course, there is more trouble with four-wheel drive cars. The propeller shaft after 100 to 1,500 mileage requires repair or, or maintenance, and the oil in the angular transmission, as in the rear axle, needs to be changed every 50,000. In the Haldex coupling, it's better to do this every 30,000, especially if the car drives in winter. The 6-speed manual transmission is familiar to all Volkswagen car owners. With engines up to 1.8 liters, the MQ250 was installed, with 2-liter engines and diesels, the MQ350. There are weak points in the manual gearbox, but they appear either during tuning or with high mileage. The under series of boxes has a weak grip. Even with a standard 250 nm of torque, it serves less than 100,000 and doesn't differ in ease of use. Moreover, a dual-mass flywheel with a resource of 120-150,000 is not cheap. In the older box, the grip is noticeably more serious, but the flywheel doesn't last much longer. Clutch fly flywheel kits from VR6 can be ordered here, however, this is only necessary for those who tune motors. There are three series of automatic transmissions on the S on the CC. Basically, the well-known DSG, DQ200, gearboxes with a dry clutch and DSJ, DQ250, with an oil bath clutch. And much less common is the classic automatic transmission I seen TF60SC, TF61SC, AK09J, AK AQ250 or AQ450, depending on the version and designation system. The Eisen Assault Rifle can be found with 1.8 TSI engines on first-year cars or on American cars mainly with a VR6 3.6 engine. The linings of the gas turbine engine of a classic design are quickly erased during active movement. They are not designed for regular floating blocking. With the timely oil change a calm driving style, a reduction in oil change intervals to 40,000 and refinement with an installation of an external fine oil filter, the box proves to be very reliable. But few people bother with this, so on average, after 100-120,000 km without changing the oil, the first problems begin – jolts, shocks, when switching, rough work and loss of dynamics. Small repairs usually don't help much, it will not be possible to simply replace the solenoids and there are no original ones on sale either. Replacing the well body assembly is an expensive pleasure, and repairing with the Zonox kits with the installation of new plungers and solenoids bodies and the solenoids themselves requires a good work culture and understanding of the process. Often, under the guise of expensive repairs, a banal flushing of the valve body is served with the replacement of the most worn out solenoids and adaptation, which is not enough for a long time. Well, a typical feature of the wiring of the service is an attempt to persuade to replace everything. Usually, in fact, not even all the rejected components are changed, and very significant differences go into a pocket of service. The box is quite well diagnosed by the scanner, and when buying, you should definitely check the operation of the box after it has completely warmed up. With engines 1.4 TSI and 1.8 TSI installed 7-speed robot DQ200. His fame is the darkest, but the copies that have come down to our time have long been repaired, modernized and completely replaced. So everything is not so scary, just avoid cars of the first years with very low mileage. There is some chance to buy a car with a problem version of the both box and the motor. Until 2012, the DQ200 on cars before restyling had problems with both the mechatronics and mechanics of the gearbox itself. It often collapsed and the, collapsed the bearings of the shift, forks, the forks themselves broke and clutch overheated. After changing the gen generation of the box, the number of problems began to subside. On the new generation, the mechanical part forks changed the clutches, changed the mechatronics, and control software. As a result, the box has become a little less dynamic, but much more reliable. From the previous generation, only a weak differential and an unpredictable resource of clutches and a dual-mass flywheel remained, which greatly depends on a human factor, pollution and load. 
and still even on laid box bearings and forks can occasionally fail. I think you should not be afraid of such a box with this thorough check. They are not nearly as expensive to repair as they were 5 or 7 years ago. The main problems have been identified and spare parts are available. The 6-speed DSJ gearboxes of the DQ250 series, which were installed on diesel engines and older gasoline engines are somewhat more reliable initially. The clutches here are in an oil bath and are made in the form of a package of large clutches. The gearbox oil pump is mechanical and therefore there are no problems at all. The service life of the clutches is more stable due to pressure leaks and pump wedges. The mechatronics wiring doesn't burn. Well, now about the sad things. When the clutches are operating, the oil in the DQ250 becomes heavily contaminated. It contains a lot of magnetic wear products, which harms not only the gearbox mechanics but also the solenoids. And the regular external filter of the automatic transmission solves the problem only partially. The relatively low price of this automatic transmission leads to the fact that it is used to replace that somewhat more capricious 7-speed DQ200 in the event of a global breakdown of the later. But the DQ250 itself on well-tuned engines is replaced with an older version of the DQ500, a 7-speed gearbox with wet clutches, even stronger and more resourceful. All CC gasoline engines rely on fairly reliable and problem-free control and cooling system. Even on 10-year-old cars, all components can be native. Of course, when tuning, some try to replace the ignition coils with reinforced red ones from the Audi R RS, and you need to keep an eye on the contamination of the radiators and the serviceability of all additional electric pumps in both directions. But with stock or almost stock motors, all will this works quite reliably. The most popular Passat CC motors are the 1.8 and 2.0 liter EA. 888 series engines, usually the first and second generations of this series in relatively simple versions. Until the latest updates to the piston group in 2013, all EA888 engines are prone to a high oil appetite and the timing remains quite problematic even on more fresh versions. The direct injection system cannot be called problem-free either, and the repair cost of this injection is much higher than that of a conventional distributed one. Unfortunately, among the owners, there is an opinion that a supercharged engine should eat oil. Many people delay in correcting problems with appetite up to a liter per thousand kilometers, although the indication for decoking or bulk heating is an appetite from a liter per 10,000 kilometers. Decarbonization of the now fashionable Dimex side is complicated by the fact that the oil pan is painted here and clogs the oil receiver with paint, and the plastic in the timing belt and the pressure sensor cannot tolerate Dimex side. Standard repairs with replacing the piston group with a modernized one and replacing the timing belt usually costs up to 150,000 rubles. Motors after 2013 have few problems with runs up to 150 and even 200,000. Basically, timing belt wear and intake coking. What will come out with earlier engines is completely unpredictable. The 1.4 TSI engines on the Passat CC are represented by late versions of the EA111 engines, and we didn't sell cars with EA211, and it's a pity because potentially the second generation of 1.4 TSI engines is the most reliable. But the first one turned out to be very unsuccessful. The VR6 3.6 FSI engines are unique in their own way. An engine of this size fits into a small sedan thanks to a unique layout with inline space cylinders. The payback for compactness is a timing chain located on the rear wall of the motor and requiring the removal of the engine for a complete replacement. However, partial replacement is possible with the brooch, even without removing the box. The design of the tensioners and dampers, the high load on the oil pump, drive chain and the balance shaft make repairs of after 150,000 mileage almost inevitable. It is not worth delaying with it when excess noise appears, otherwise the cost will be even higher. Of course, the power of the engine is very high, but the 1.8 and 2.0 TSI engines are boosted to the same 300 horsepower easy enough. And VR6 3.6 FSI gives out the rated power only in use, and that is not always the case. The motor as a whole is a little more reliable than the EA888 inline force, but any of its problems are much more expensive. And given that the cars with this engine usually comes to us from the United States and bought them to drive, the chances for a happy future are small. Diesel engines on the Passat CC are rare. Potentially, there are fewer problems with them than with gasoline engines. 
but the possibility of getting to expensive repairs of fuel equipment somewhat negates the advantages in the reliability of the mechanical part. On this information on the problems of the Volkswagen Passat CC is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.